Okay, this question says, what is the equivalent weight of a hydride if the equivalent weight of its oxide is 20 grams? So, there are some element whose oxide has an equivalent weight of 20 grams, right? So, uh, when you are looking at an oxide, what can you say about the uh, equivalent weight of an oxide? It will be the equivalent weight of element plus 8, right? Think about this. Why? One equivalent of a substance will combine with one equivalent of uh, oxygen to give you one equivalent of oxide. Right? This is the whole idea of equivalence. So, equivalent weight of the substance will react with equivalent weight of oxygen and give you equivalent weight of oxide. So, we know that 20 grams is the equivalent weight of oxide or um, the overall oxide, compound oxide. And as far as oxygen is concerned, we know equivalent weight is 8. Right? So, we have seen this in the definition itself. Right? What is equivalent weight of a substance? The weight of that substance that combines with uh, 1.008 grams of hydrogen or like uh, 8 grams of oxygen or 35.5 grams of chlorine and so on, right? Um, you can think of elemental uh, equivalent weight as atomic weight divided by valency. That is a easy way to remember it. So, oxygen atomic weight is 16, uh, valency is normally 2. So, yeah, 8 is the equivalent weight of oxygen. So, uh, out of 20, 8 gram is that of oxygen. So, which means that equivalent weight of element is going to be 12 grams. Now, by the same logic, we can say that equivalent weight of a hydride will be the equivalent weight of the element, right? So, equivalent weight of element plus equivalent weight of hydrogen and we know equivalent weight of hydrogen is how much 1 gram right so obviously equivalent weight of element we have already calculated as 12 gram so 12 gram plus 1 gram means 13 grams will be the equivalent weight of the hydride which is obviously option d Okay, this question says, which of the following orbitals described by the three quantum numbers will have different energies for a multi-electron atom in the absence of electric and magnetic fields? Cool. So, uh, different, uh, you know, N, L, M values are given. We know. What do you, um, what do you, what do we remember about off bow principle? We know that energy is dependent on the N plus L value. Right. So, um, if you are looking at this uh, first one, this you can see n is equal to 1, l is equal to 0, this is 1s. Um, n is equal to 2, l is equal to 1 is uh, 2p. Uh, specifically, this is like uh, m is equal to minus 1, it could be px, py. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not, m value is not very relevant to us when it comes to energy. So, this is some 2p, right. So, the third one is also some 2p only. You can see n is equal to 2, l is equal to 1 corresponds to p. This is in another orientation, that's all. So, these two have same energy is something that you can see. Similarly, if I'm looking at 4, it is 3 and 2, right? So, 3d is what we have here. Some orientation is there. And then you have 3d once again and 0 would mean that this is another orientation. Normally, 3d z square is what we represent here by this, right? So, normally m is equal to 0 is given to z. 3d z square. But yeah, whatever. So, the, this again, you can see here that these two have like same energies, right? So, which of the following will have different energies is what is asked, right? So, let's see 4 and 5. Do they have different energies? Uh, no, of course not. In the absence of an external electric or magnetic field, they would have the same energies. 1 and 2, let's see. 1 and 2 do have different energies. Yes, right? So, 1s and 2p will definitely have uh, different energies. 2 and 3, let's see. 2 and 3, of course, they have the same energy. So, this is also wrong, right? So, yeah, only one option is there where I am seeing that there is significant different energies for multi-electron systems, which is 1s and 2p having different energies. So, correct answer is B option. Okay, this question says, XML of hydrogen gas diffuses through a hole in a container in 5 seconds. The time taken for the effusion of the same volume of gas is specified below under identical conditions. So, identical conditions means pressure and temperature are the same and also the hole through which uh, diffusion effusion is taking place is also the same, right? So, what can you say? Rate is proportional to, uh, I mean, like pressure is same, temperature is same, area is same. So, you can say rate is inversely related to square root of m. This molar mass is the only thing that is different, right? So, now xml of gas is diffusing in 5 seconds. So, I can write rate of hydrogen in terms of volume per unit time as x by 5 ml per second, right? So, rate of hydrogen is x by 5. Right? The time taken for effusion of same volume of another gas, right? So, same volume XML is what is diffusing for another gas. Let's say some other gas is there. So, rate of gas will be X divided by T, right? If time T 
is uh, taken for XML diffusion, X by T is going to be the rate, right? So what can I say? Rate of hydrogen by rate of gas from this uh, relation, I can say it should be equal to root of molar mass of gas divided by molar mass of uh, your hydrogen, right? So which means that this is supposed to be equal to root of M by 2, right? So rate of hydrogen was what? X by 5. So X by 5 divided by X by T should be equal to root M by 2. This is the relation that is, should be satisfied by whatever is the correct answer. Right. So what do we get? We will get T by 5. Right. So T by 5 is equal to root M by 2. Right. Uh, so T is equal to 5 root M by 2. Oh, M by 2. Which one satisfies this is what I am trying to find out. Right. So what will I get? Um, let's calculate 1 by 1 for all of these. Right. So T is supposed to be equal to 5 into root M by 2. So let me calculate 5 into root M by 2 for all of these. Right. So here it will be 5 into root of 4 by 2 which is 5 root 2 which is obviously not 10 seconds so we are gone so 20 second oxygen 5 root m molar mass of oxygen is 32 by 2 is 16 5 into root 16 root 16 is 4 5 into 4 is 20 perfectly works for us right uh, for CO, I will write 5 into root of uh, CO, 12 plus 16, 28, right? So 28 by 2 is 14. Root 14 is definitely not 5, so it can't be 25, right? So this is wrong. So for next one is root of 5 root of uh, 12 plus 32, 44 by 2 is 22. Again, root 22 is not 7, so it is definitely not 35, right? So this is also wrong. So only one option here. 20 seconds oxygen is the correct combination where uh, we can say that XML uh, will be diffused. So yeah, under identical conditions. So yeah, correct answer is B option. Okay, this question says the enthalpy of vaporization of liquid diethyl ether is 26 kilojoule per mole at its boiling point of 35 degrees C. Calculate delta S naught for the conversion of vapor to liquid condensation at 35 degrees C. Right. So, uh, vapor to liquid con conversion is what we have. Right. So, um, what can you say? Like when we are looking at, uh, uh, cool. So, what we say is that as far as uh, delta G is concerned, we say that delta G will be equal to zero when the system is at equilibrium. Right. So, when it is, uh, when uh, diethyl, uh, diethyl ether, right. Yeah, diethyl ether is vaporizing at its boiling point of 35 degrees C, we know that um, at this point your liquid and your vapors are at equilibrium, right? That is the whole idea of boiling point, right? So they are at equilibrium at this point in time, which means that delta G will be zero. Delta G is supposed to be equal to delta H minus T delta S, which is equal to zero, which means that delta S will be equal to delta H by T, right? So uh, this is the situation that we have. So we know enthalpy, we know temperature at which this is happening. We should be able to find the value of delta S, right? So uh, yeah, what do we have here? We have vapor to liquid this time around. So entropy is going to decrease. It's going to be a negative value. Uh, plus what is the value going to be? Let's uh, calculate that. Uh, 26 kilojoule per mole is uh, absorbed during vaporization. So during condensation, 26 kilojoule will be released. So 26 into 1000 joule per mole is released. So minus sign I am adding here because obviously heat is released. Divided by temperature is 35 degree C. 35 degree C is 35 plus 273, right? So 273 plus 30 is 303 plus 5 is 308. Right. So joule per Kelvin. I convert a kilojoule to joule and now I'm going to get the answer in joule per Kelvin per mole. Right. So joule per mole was already there divided by Kelvin. So joule per mole per Kelvin. So how much is this going to be? Uh, if I'm looking at this uh, roughly, right, if I want to calculate the rough value, can I say that this is approximately 308 is approximately 300 into 3.3 or something would give me 1000. Right. So 3.3 into 26. How much is this? 26 into 3 is uh, 60 plus 18, 78 plus uh, 
0.3 into 26 would be what? 7.8. So 7.8 plus 78 is how much? 85.8 is something like uh, the value that I'm getting. Again, obviously, this is a wild approximation that we have done. We just need a rough value because there are only two values. If you look at the options, there is only this 84 and 150, right? I mean, we don't want the positive values at all. So these are obviously discarded and they are far separated from each other. I can do some... Uh, uh, assumptions obviously and I'm seeing that somewhere around 85, 84 is what I'm getting. So looking at the options obviously the correct answer is A minus 84.2, 84.2 joule per mole per Kelvin. Okay, this question says XY2 dissociates according to the given equation XY2 in gas phase giving me XY in gas phase plus Y in gas phase then uh, when the initial pressure of XY2 is 600 mm of mercury, the total equilibrium pressure is 800 mm of mercury. Find the value of equilibrium constant for the res reaction, assuming that the volume of the system remains unchanged. Right? Volume is all same. Temperature is also obviously hopefully same. So here we are trying to find out the equilibrium constant. Uh, obviously looking at the options, we can guess that it is obviously Kp that we are trying to find out. So let's write down what is the reaction XY2. All of them are in gas phase. No, I'm not uh, writing G again. Right? So all of them are in gas phase. So no tension. Time t equal to 0. This had a pressure of 600 mm. It should be very clear for you to write down these kind of tables, right? You should be very comfortable with these, right? You can write in terms of number of moles, you can write in terms of pressure, whatever, right? Why? Because, see, normally when we write in terms of moles, I can write, okay, some A moles is there, these are not there. Let's say X moles dissociated, then I'm going to get X and X. This is in terms of moles. But the point is that in such questions, you can directly use in terms of pressure also. Right, you can represent in terms of pressure. Why? Because PV equal to NRT, right? Number of moles, temperature, uh, volume, uh, temperature and R are obviously constant, which means pressure is directly proportional to number of moles. So, number of moles, um, however it is like reducing, in that same proportion only, uh, pressure will also be reducing, right? So, instead of taking A minus X, X and X, I can also write P minus P, uh, I mean P naught minus P, P and P, right? So, let's say, the time t equal to t equilibrium, let's say the pressure reduced by p, right? Which means the final pressure of xy2 became some 600 minus p, let's say, right? So, one mole gives me one mole and one mole. So, p pressure reduction will give me p pressure and p pressure. So, I'm going to get p and p here, right? Because pressure is proportional to number of moles. So, I can write this, right? So, 600 minus, uh, if it was like, let's say 2xy, I would have written 2p here, right? It is not what we have. So, we won't write that either. Right. So what is the total pressure if this is the case? At this point, total pressure should have been 600 minus P plus P plus P, which means 600 plus P should have been the final pressure, which is of course given to us as 800 mm of mercury. So P we are getting to be equal to 200 mm of mercury. What does that tell you? Final pressure of my XY2 is turning out to be 600 minus P. What is 600 minus P? It is going to be 400. And what is P? We know P is both. 200 right so what is kp going to be kp is equal to pressure of xy into pressure of y divided by pressure of xy2 which is going to be how much 200 into 200 divided by 400 obviously the answer is 100 right so 100 mm of mercury is the kp that i am getting which is obviously option 